Let's talk sports on assignments now. For most sports professionals, juggling career with other commitments can be daunting. In a situation which requires sheer determination, some do successfully merge the two whilst others give up halfway. In this special report, Juliet Bewa tells the story of Patience Agri's 21-year career as coach of second D-based Colts Football Club as summons to Dubai and Munich. This is Sekendi Takuradi, capital of the western region of Ghana. Across its streets and towns, there is an ever-present charm of purpose and grit. Adorned with the glitter of diligence, it offers stories of relentless pursuit of them such as that of 47-year-old Patience Agri, a Colts football coach. What player can you do? One, one stake. BM. Yes, Good morning. Patience owns the Asaman Sudo Bayern Munich club, which plays in Ghana's juvenile tier league in the region. Started in 1998, both owner and club have had a fairy tale journey. The beauty that has connected the dots all this well is born out of the need to excel. Since I'm starting, my team is going to be amazing. Now, I have a couple of balls, 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 a Number <laughs> As I'm motivating my mind, any time I am, I better move my family. Because if I'm not going to school, if I'm not going to school, I'm not going to be able to do anything. Not because of me, I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm not going to be able to do anything. I will share with school so she may not see as enough for born of a come because I'm a pedal born. Also, I'm busy with a while, but it's not a patience's hassle fell into the waiting hands of a sport that never stops giving. Today, despite not bearing the full fruits of what should be a gainfully rewarding daily routine, she is at least living her dream. <laughs> Asaman Sudo Bayern Munich Club has become a regional poster club while patience, a fortress many look up to for redemption. Asaman Sudo Bayern Munich, what is in that name? That sounds familiar. The club's name was inspired by former Ghana and Bayern Munich defender Samuel Osei Kufu. Na am a ball. I'm a bit today, Osei Kufu. Germany, Bayern Munich team. Osei Kufu, you'll be a Munda Wabu team. No, actually. Ah, no, no, yeah, Ghana. In fact, all ball Bayern Munich are all Kunu or Wadon, Nepe, all Kunu is my team. No, I'm a penny ball. Anytime you're Bobo Bobby, I know each other, or you're serious. It's a Musha Zina must know, not to team. Team number two, because of for sake of Fonsi, is a team number two, Bayern Munich. In the last two decades that she has been at it, her unfilled competence and direction has led to many professional football hopefuls getting the needed head start before launching full fledged careers. Marco coaching course, more excited. See, minimum techniques and craft from grassroots. 
Afi minyi minyi na na wan malanga sana so my shada ma bo bo le kakre bi but ma mbo. Mzi ye just train in ara. Nza at least pass, shoot, receive, move, dash and turn in zi. Patience continues to hone a lifelong dream of nurturing talent who will be better ambassadors of her resilience. This underlining theme is not lost on these youngsters. I'm so much starting now. I'm striking too. Most of the time, I'm going to go. Because I don't have a chance to go. I'm going 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 to go. You know, a situation on the move for me. No matter, we put in more effort. I want more discipline side. I train our players there. As a footballer, baby, baby, Jimmy, be able to make a point there. He's a good player. Okay, she's an exemplary figure. When I was moving from her side to join a second division team, all my papers and things, she helped me. She was the only person who was helping out, helping me out to achieve whatever I want to achieve there. But the feet have also come with a fair share of challenges, such as financing and juggling passion and career with trying to make ends meet. I work in school. So much hard and time. Me a few hours, I'm a part pra. Me a me be be a. Me get a once. Me go. I want to my work or school. So work in school. I know so much. I fast. Na ma ako training guns. Na ma afi ne ma ako me ki training. So mo ko training is ayapo ni ten. Shuma ba na maaye fast na maaye mosa dami ni ebi bi kaka Christian wanwa na me ni akwa mo shuma rest kaka because odo ana para mo kote ni mo badama na mo bre mo tana azi bitu na mo tuni tan me ni mfonya ma mo tana credit mo kaka akra na mo zo support football no nani ni fi ni na na times usha e mo kuna bwa ma kaka sa mo kado mo bwa ma na mo bwa bwa ma anga sa anga sa bwa na mo kono nuko na shamba farman na mo kum mo kwa basho ana ni shau ni bibi ya. Patience continues to be a survival symbol for most women in sports in Ghana and Africa. Across various sporting disciplines where women compete locally, there are the obvious tales of neglect and being treated as second class. That has to change going forward. From the outside, Patience appears to be breathing fine even though she has her head underwater. But sometimes, the pushing force of the storm, the challenges, the stereotypes at all, brings out the hidden scars. This is the face of ambition. Interesting choice of career, but of course born out of passion, and that was Patience Agri telling her story about how she coaches a Colts club. And this story was put together by Julia Bewa, who, by the way, has joined me in the studios here on TV3 New Day. Good morning. Now, first of all, I want to know what piqued your interest in this particular story, because some people might say that this is not the first woman to coach, you know, a football club. Even the NFL, we have women who coach, and you know, they, they coach big men, you know, and so someone would ask. Why did you decide to do this story? Well, I think um, we are always looking out for unique stories. Yeah. We are always looking out for stories that will impact. And I think that is what TV3 we stand for. And mm. um, our sports department as well. We want stories that will impact, not just doing any other yeah. stories. So um, when I saw Madame Patience Agri's story online, um, okay. I think it was just a picture that Asamoah posted. Okay. Um, when he was going around doing the baby jet and the 17 tournament. Oh. So I saw the picture and I, I was interested in how she's been able to do this for 21 years mm -hmm. and um, w what goes on there when um, second year and how she goes through even managing these boys because we've seen other stories yeah. um, across Europe and beyond but in Ghana here is a bit unique so we wanted to final so clearly the story connected to um the dot and what we believe in so we set out to go and find out how she goes about even um getting or how it all started or how she goes about getting these players together okay you mentioned unique it's a unique story but what makes her story in particular very unique and what makes her unique as well well um, unique in so many ways because um she's a woman mm -hmm. and um if you're a woman you don't have to play um, second fiddle, like we, we, we said, but yeah. she's juggling motherhood. Yeah. And as well as taking care of um, her grandchildren 
and grandchildren also, as well. Yeah, and also oh. doing this job. Wow. Trying so hard to make sure that she puts smiles on the faces of these players mm -hmm. because it's a cult team. Yeah. And as for the juvenile side, is is an I would say is a lower tier. Okay. And if you go to maybe outside, they call it lower tier. And we've had oh. um, amazing stories come out from um, cult football. Um, the likes of Stephen Appiah, Lai Kenston, Samwejan himself, mm. Godwin Atram, and even Ali Jara, former Ghana goalkeeper, yeah. they all came through Colts football. Okay. Now it has shifted to um, academy. So juggling all those things and doing the Colts and trying to see that these players survive and doing it for 21 years and not having any form of support, wanted to find out. It, it was unique because... Yeah. How, how is she going through all this and not having any support and you're still getting up every morning, having mm. the um, bravery and the encouragement to go on to go and do this? And the fact that you mentioned support and, you know, it, previously uh, attention was on these cult clubs. But like you said, now they focus on the academies. Yeah. What happens to these people who run these cult clubs? If they are not getting support, how are they still managing to run these clubs and what is the way forward for them? That, that is exactly what I asked there because I asked there, You've been doing this for 21 years yeah. and you're not getting that enough support because people come in, they're like, okay, I'm going to get you maybe sachet water for your boys and everything. And they're mm. a lot because she has under 15, under 17. Oh. And she goes to play like football matches with them. Wow. They have to rent buses and everything. Exactly. So why are you still doing this? And mm -hmm. she's like, I know one day it's going to pay off. Even one, after 21 even years. Even after 21 years and it's not paying and maybe fully she's not getting that um the full sat yeah, yeah. full satisfaction mm. but she's still holding on that she's still not um old she's yeah. just about 47 she's still not old she so she's really good for yeah, her age she, as well she's still holding on to that dream that maybe mm. one day things will turn or the tables will turn and she'll get that needed help mm. for her to see um the guys also um fulfill their dreams because she leaves the um cold team for another coach, and the okay. players don't go for training. They don't turn up because it's not her. <laughs> really? Yeah. So there is that bond between exactly. her. And you can tell from the way the players spoke passionately yeah. about her. But has there been any major player that has, you know, emerged from her club? Yeah, a, f a few of them. Um, she has one player at Nani IFC, okay. as she told me. And she has one currently um, on loan in the, um, in the US, in the MLS, mm. but not um, with a top tier side. So. Okay. The player was just going for loan, so we're hoping that more players will come out from there. Definitely. But when we posted a story online, I think we got a lot of feedback with mm. people saying, oh, I used to train there with footballers now, um, saying, oh, I used to train there. Although they are not like fully fleshed professional mm. footballers, they are playing outside though. But uh, oh, I used to train there, she used to train me. So you could clearly see the impact that she has made in the Bakatri or the Asamansudo like, township. Yeah. But the question again is, so if they used to play there and they understand the challenges that she faced, why, why have they not gone back to support her even further? I think um, that I, I wouldn't know, mm. <laughs> but we, we hope that maybe after this, we put in her story out, out there. We're hoping people. that they will reach out to her. We're hoping that, that they will um, think about every help mm -hmm. that she gave them. Maybe they're not in a position now to help her, but of we're course. hoping that in some way or the other, they'll also try and help her and the team. Mm. But this leads us into a bigger conversation about women in sports and whether there's enough support for such women. Because uh, now we're saying that women empowerment, we need women to do equally what men can do as well. Yeah. So really, if that conversation is beginning, where are we going with this? Well, it's, it's, it's a bigger debate mm. and um, we, we've started it and I think we're going to see to the end of it because yeah. um, a just an example of, of in Ghana here is um, our black queens and yeah. um, also currently even the 4 by 100 meter relay team mm -hmm. that went to the um, World Athletics Championships, they are complaining about not, they're not being paid their mm. per diems. Wow. And that is unacceptable. Yeah. So there is no clear plan when, I, when we talk about um, women's football especially in Ghana. We have to have a clear plan. We do. How do you have that plan? Um, we, we know we don't have a president or the Ghana Football Association president yet. 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 And, um, mm. We're hoping whoever gets Imagine. the nod to 
be the president, we are going to ask them critical questions. Mm -hmm. And this time, it won't be just questions. It will be a time that we see through. You give us timelines mm -hmm. that you are going to do this for the women. Because these are the women who have won something for the nation. Yeah. We followed the Black Stars for so many years, but nothing has come out. So it's time that they see to the need of the women because mm. they are doing exceptionally well, right from the leagues, um, Ashton ladies to immigration and all the others. Mm. They are doing exceptionally well, but they are not getting the right people to help them. So yeah. we need to, um, the authorities, we need to need have to a clear plan. We need to have a paradigm shift exactly. because um, things have to um, happen. And we at TV3 here, we as, as the sports desk, I think, um, we're going to take it up on ourselves to make sure that we get results. Definitely. Yeah. We will get results. Uh, before I wrap up, let me just veer off a little bit. We're talking about the Ghana Football Association. There's only one woman standing <laughs> as against other men who are hoping to become president. Do you think that this woman stands a chance? And if she does, will she be the one to bring about that paradigm shift that we need? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a, it's a woman thing. But yeah. I think um, Amanda um, Clinton uh, believes I've heard her speak. She was... On New Day, on New Day yes. um, last, last week, week. and um, she clearly outlined her plans that what she wants to do. And I think it's not just a me like talk. Yeah. We are not doing talk shop this time. Mm. I think we want results, just like I, I said. So um, if the delegates feel that Amanda's um, policies works uh, for them need, and yeah. uh, is what they need, they will vote for her. Definitely. If the others, maybe Kato Kweku, Georgia Free, um, Fred Papo, and um, Palmer is still um, battling with the normalization yeah, committee. If is. they feel mm. um, that any of them fits the position and it, their policies also works for them, I think they will bring them in. But all that Certainly. we are saying is we need to get a proper framework for women's football in Ghana mm. and women in sports in as sports. well because we can't just neglect them. Thank you so much, Juliet Bewa. And she put together that story on but, assignment um, today. Bella, before, yes. okay. before I go, yes. <laughs> otherwise I'm going to be in big trouble. Okay. <laughs> I think um, a lot of people contributed to this and, um, right. story. Um, my cameraman, Philip, um, he, he was amazing. And um, the sound person as well, Bright, mm. was also, um, they were all hands-on, as well as our driver, that when we went to um, Second D. About 2 a.m., we were still looking for a place to sleep wow. in Second D. So I think I just want to say thank you to them. We commend your team. Thank you and so much And my boss as well, Michael awesome. OTAJ, because we told okay. him, like, two days, we were like, okay, Michael, we are going to Second D. Like, yeah. Okay, what's the story about this? Yeah. Okay, we are good. We should go. So. Be nice. Say thank yeah. you to me for at least granting our oh, okay. <laughs> Bella, thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us on New Day. And we know that you'll definitely be unearthing uh, more of such talents. We need these stories to be told. So thank you so much. Thank you.